Hello, hello. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share um, with you today. My name is Shannon White and I have the privilege to share a word with you. Just giving honor to my pastor, John Jenkins and First Lady Trina Jenkins, my church, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I'm excited to just jump into God, God's word with you. Um, I am an advocate and I'm a champion for children and teens experiencing God for themselves. Um, and so today I usually would talk about them directly, but I really kind of want to go around the back door because as leaders of young people, whether you're a parent, whether you're a young person, uh, a youth leader, whether you are an educator, we have been charged with caring and stewarding and governing young people. And so a lot of times we, we want the best for them, right? But there are also things that can get in the way, that can get in the way of the fruit. And so there was a young lady who said something to me that changed my life as a school counselor, as a youth minister, as a teen mentor. And she said these words that will never leave my mind. She said, Miss White, they told me to pray, but it doesn't work. And that has never left me because there's so many times and I knew her mom, I knew her mom took her to therapy. I knew her mom took her to church, to youth group and the piano and the soccer, right? As leaders of young people, we do the best that we can to show them who they are and to show them God. But even with that, she said, it doesn't work. And I don't know about you, but I don't want any of the young people, whether it's my kids, my biological kids, whether it is the children I'm charged over, to miss God. And so let's talk about how we can do it. Let's strategize together today for a little bit of time. So if you're a person that takes notes, I know that usually we want kids to eat fruit, right? We want kids to eat your fruits, eat your vegetables. But today, we're going to switch it up a little bit, all right? Today, I want to say, pass the fruit. Pass the fruit. Keep it going. I don't want it. Pass the fruit. Mm -mm, no, thank you. All right. Because sometimes passing the fruit in the natural isn't great. But sometimes you got to pass the fruit in the spiritual because if not, it affects our kids. So let's go to the word. So in Genesis, right, we know that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And he did all these things. He created um, the world. He made sure that everything was in order. He made sure that the, the, the streams came up out the ground to water the ground, <clears throat> excuse me, the animals. He made Adam and Eve, gave them everything that they need. You can eat from anything except for these trees right here. The beautiful thing about our God is that he will put everything in place for us. Everything that we need, it says that he will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. There were so many beautiful riches in Genesis. It just seems perfect to us, right? But he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if he did it for Adam and Eve, don't you know that he loves you enough to prepare a place for you? The Bible says he prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. The same way that he will prepare a place for them, he'll do the same thing for you. And he does it a lot for us. But we happen, the same in the, we happen to fall into the same pattern that Eve fell into. And we eat the fruit. Let's talk about it. Because it seems like a simple story, right? If you go to Genesis 3, and that's what we're going to be focusing on. Genesis 3. If you go to Genesis 3, it lets you know about the fall, right? And it says, right, now the serpent, Genesis 3, 1, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat the mini tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Verse four, you will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now, I want to stop there. So we just read Genesis chapter three, verses one through five. Here's the thing. A lot of times God has prepared a place for us 
as just his sons and daughters. But then there are some things and people and situations that charm us just like the serpent did. Because check this out, Eve is just like us. She knew the word of God. She said, God said, da, 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 da. we know what's in the Bible. We know what God has spoken to you about you, about your kids, right? She pushed back. She resisted the devil for a bit, right? She did. She did a little push, push back. I'm not doing that. Sometimes we do that. But ultimately, verse six says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. I want to stop there because a lot of times we take in so much in this world, this culture that we live in. So much is thrown at us through social media, right? So much is thrown at us um, through online, through advertisements on the television, through family traditions, through friendship ideals and conversations, through experiences that we've been through in life that could be traumatic or just life encounters but they serve as the serpent in our personal garden. And so what happens is that sometimes we eat the fruit. We eat the fruit of the culture. We eat the fruit of the culture that says that you need to be busy over being obedient to God. That says you need to be moving so much instead of getting rest. To says that you need to be uh, having your kids in line just like this instead of taking time to look and examine who they are and learn who God says they are. There's so many things, fruit, things being thrown at us, ideas being thrown at us. And even though just like Eve, we knew the word of God, we know the word of God. Sometimes we see some stuff and it looks desirable. It looks good for a second. It looks good for a second to yell at my kids because I'm frustrated because they're not listening to me. It looks good for a second to go and demand a certain lifestyle for my kid because they're not doing what the Bible says. It looks good for me, excuse me, to go and to spend some money on a credit card that I can just pay back later, even though the Bible says, oh, no, man, anything but love. It looks good for me to go ahead and indulge in all of these fatty foods that taste delicious because I love macaroni and cheese and sweet potatoes, praise God, but eating that on a regular it's not good for my temple. So just like Eve, there's so many ideas and suggestions that we get and we eat the fruit. We eat the fruit. Now, what's amazing and interesting here is that when they got caught, when God was like, where y'all at? Adam and Eve, where you at? And they said, what happened? God said to them, what did you do? And Eve's response was, the serpent deceived me and I, and I ate it. Now the word deceive in the Bible, it also comes from, if you find other places in the Bible, it's the word nausea and it can also stand for debt. Have you have any debt, right? Things that you were deceived, they seem good at the moment, but like later down the line, it bit you in the butt. This was the first instance of debt. And nausea, that word in the Greek lexicon, speaks to and actually means beguiled, deceive, lead astray. And they're little things. They're not huge things because that wasn't like a huge thing, right? You just ate a piece of fruit. But the small things that we do as leaders, as parents, as youth ministers, as educators, the small things that seem so little it affects generations to come because guess what happened? When Eve ate it, she consumed it just like that. What did she do? She gave it to her husband. And that consequence led to her seed being affected. So there are some times when uh, you may make choices. You may be led astray into a relationship, into a financial decision, into a situation where it seems good, right? It seems good. God loves me. Surely I'll be okay. But the debt, the nausea, the being led astray, whether it's by a situation, by a person, 
by a thing, the consequences are great because the consequences leads to a curse where you have to toil and you have to work through life and you're uncomfortable and you're unsettled, but it's because you didn't pass the fruit. Pass, I'm a pass on that. I'm a pass, that's not for me, I'm a pass. And it's not that it's such a great big sin, but you just got deceived. You got nausea. You got, you got, you got led astray a little bit. It look, have you ever, has it ever happened to you? You were nauseous. You were deceived. You got into a debt, a financial debt, right? You wanted this new car. So now you got this big debt. You wanted to go to college. So you got this big student loans are the devil. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Right? You got into this big student loan debt. You wanted this big old house. So you got this huge mortgage. You wanted a timeshare. You got timeshare debt. Or even relational. Somebody presented to you a certain way. And they, it seemed good. It seemed, it seemed desirable. So you didn't pass the fruit, you took it. And then it led to guilt and low self-esteem and a change of who you are, right? I don't show up like this. This isn't me. Relational debt, relational nausea, emotional choices, eating all this food that's unhealthy. That feels good in the moment. Feels good to eat some chips. I promise you eat some chips and watch a movie. But if you do it too much, it's bad for your temple. Gossiping, right? Your friends can nausea you, lead you astray. Girl, did you hear about so and so? No, what happened? That they just led you right astray. You just ate that apple, you just or fruit, right? It's easy to do. But the beautiful thing is that, as we said in the beginning, God wants us to have a Genesis one, ex one and two experience where everything that you need is there. You have direct connection to God, no filters, no barriers. You have dominion and authority over everything that is, that is around you. Sometimes you feel helpless. That's not God's will. He's a loving God. He created you with a purpose in mind. And the consequence of eating the fruit not passing it, it's the curse. That was the consequence. And there are times when you find yourself nauseous and you're under a curse of low self-esteem, of guilt, of shame, of regret, of fear, of financial debt, re toxic relationships. But the beautiful thing about God is, is and I love this about him, is that he, he cares, he cares so much. And he wants to see you win in spite of all of that. That's why Jesus came. Because God was like, no, daughter, no, son. I know what you did. I know it sounded good at the time. But I also know that you're flesh, which means you'll make some dumb choices sometimes. So I'm going to send my son, Jesus, to become a curse, to take your place. I'm black. So but the way that we grew up is if you did something, you're going to get your butt whipped. And if you were a nice big brother or sister, you, you know, they may step in every once in a while, and take it for you. That's what God, that's what Jesus did. He was like, you know what, dad, heavenly father, I'm going to go down because I know they keep tripping. They keep eating that fruit from the culture. They keep eating that fruit from their friends and their family. So I'm going to take the curse for them. I'm going to take that whooping for them, right? When he went to Calvary. And I'm gonna take their place. I'm gonna take their place because I know the freedom. Jesus was there in the beginning. The Bible says, let us make man in our own image. In Genesis, when they made man, it said, let us, right? In the beginning was God in the word. Jesus is the word. Jesus was there from the beginning. He knew God's plan. And so when he saw it wasn't going the right way, he loved us enough to agree to take our punishment so that we can experience that Genesis one and two experience which is freedom, which is light, which is love, which is truth. And I love that so much about our God. I love that so much. Because what he understood and what I understand and I hope you understand is that even though we may make decisions that seem small, just like Eve, it seems small, but the consequences were for generations until somebody stepped in to shift it back into divine order. 
And all it takes is just a yes. Yes. I, I, I do believe, right, that Jesus died on the cross. Faith. He says, all who call on me will be saved. Saved from deception. Saved from being nauseous. Not Yes, you get saved from hell. And that's amazing because I ain't trying to go there. But you get saved your generation gets saved. The people behind you get excused from the curse. It's beautiful. You can reset some stuff by your decision. It says by one man's decision, Nate, people fail. But by another man, Jesus' decision, people are made righteous. And you have the power as a mom, a dad, a youth minister, an aunt, uncle, an educator, that when you make the decision to say, you know what? I've been nauseous in some areas. I ain't gonna lie. I'm out of order in some areas. I fell into the trap of the culture. I, I went with it. Yeah, I did. And it's caused me some painful consequences. But I, I want all that God has for me. I want all of it. And I want my kids to have all of it. I want my kids to see such godly fruit in my life of peace, of joy, of dominion, of authority, of goodness, of mercy. I want my kids and those behind me to see that so then they can believe and say, I, I, I wanna know that God. I wanna know your God. That's my heart's desire is that I live a life that's pure and true because I wanna know God and I wanna live in everything he has for me, but I, don't, I want to make it easy for my kids to know God. I don't even want it to be a decision for them. I want them to see such fruit from Heavenly Father through my life that it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. But you know what it requires? It requires me to do two things. This is two. <laughs> it requires me to, one, humble myself, look at myself and my situations and say, Shannon, you got not shot. You should have passed the fruit and you ate it. And look and confront those areas. That's what God did. God was like, what did you do? You got to ask yourself, what did you do? I got that credit card. I got into that relationship. I joined that friendship group. I said this or that to my boss. I probably shouldn't have said, right? I keep eating at 10 p.m., right? Don't got to be big things. I keep gossiping and speaking division in my job. I keep participating in the, in the job gossip and the negativity and complaining. I keep yelling at my kids, getting on my nerves, right? Whatever. There's more, there's more, there's so much more and it takes the first decision to confront that thing and say, what did you, what did you do? This is what I did and take it to God. Say, God, this is what I did but I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he loved me enough to come down from his comfy place in heaven to, to re put stuff in order for me through the cross so that I could be free. And I refuse to not walk in freedom anymore. So confront it and bring it to God. The second thing you gotta do is come out of alignment with that fruit. It's not enough to say, um, God, I don't want to do this anymore. I could say all day, I want to be debt free and then still keep using my credit cards. That's foolish. <laughs> but we do it. So once you bring it to God, you bring your heart to God. You come out of alignment with it by asking God for help. God, I'm in this situation. And there's consequences connected to it. But what I need your help because I want more. I want to see you. I want to be closer to you. I want to get out of this situation and I can't do it on my own. So if that's you, all it takes is two steps. Confronting that thing, just being honest with God. Like, this is where I'm at, God. I got nauseous here. I ate the apple, I ate the fruit, I ate the orange, whatever it was, I ate it. And it's also affecting my other relationship. It's affecting my, my mood and my energy. It's affecting my finances. It's affecting how I move in ministry. It's affecting whatever. Bring it to him and then ask for help. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And so many of us are just trying to do it on our own and we don't have to. That's the beauty of the love of God, right? Nothing separates us from it. There's more and not just more for you, 
but you start a ripple effect. Just like how Eve started a negative ripple effect, Jesus started a positive ripple effect. So we got a choice, which ripple are you gonna keep going? You going with the Eve ripple of eating fruit of the culture? Or are you gonna go with the Christ ripple, which brings life, right? Christ came that we can have life and have it more abundantly. That choice is yours. So you're going to pass the fruit or you're going to take a bite and take a risk. It's up to you. But as leaders of young people, I implore you, we got to do something so they can believe. Because if not, it'll be like the Bible, another generation who didn't know God. And I don't want to be a part of the building that. So if you would join me, let's pass the fruit, but let's not do it in our own strength. We have a father who is gracious and loving. And he says, lo, I am with you to the end of the world. He says that. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You don't got to do it alone. So take off the superwoman, the Superman complex and let God be God and follow him and he'll show you the way. So if you like me, when they ask you, you want some of this? Whether it's debt, whether it's relationships, thoughts, ideas, choices, what are you going to say? Pass the fruit. I don't want it. I'm Shannon White. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. God bless you.